Hello friends, I'm Professor John Gallagher, and on behalf of our students and our teaching assistants, I want to welcome you all to our Spring 2021 Boston College Swift Student App Showcase. Our students have been working all semester on their zero to full stack course. They've completed their exams. They've built lots of apps from games to weather apps, to-do list, a Yelp clone. Now we had lots of fun learning real concepts through unconventional examples. I promise no hello world, no foobar, no Fibonacci sequence. Instead, we had our students build a Pokédex an app listing all 900 Game of Thrones houses, an app to tell how all right Matthew McConaughey is, all right, all right, all right. a Taylor Swift beef management routine that removes Kanye West from a party guest list, an act your age routine that removes Lil and Young from the names of any rappers and MCs that are too old for those monikers, a magic eight ball, a Dungeons and Dragons dice roller, and many, many more. Well, now it's their time to show you their original creations. Now, our class was held in person this semester where everyone was masked up. Our office hours have all been in Zoom. We've been working in Canvas forums. And now our students are ready to show their swifty new skills. Many of our students had never taken a collegiate computing course before. Almost no one in class had built an app before this class. And while this is a first for most of our students, many of our former students have gone on to launch their own projects in the App Store. They've gained critical skills to launch entrepreneurial ventures. And they've secured engineering jobs from firms ranging from Amazon to Zynga. Now, the world needs more technologists, so please share your encouraging comments and supportive feedback in the chat. And if you're watching an archived version, in the comments section below the videos. Anyone who gets through the intensity of a zero to full stack course while taking a full load of other university courses and dealing with pandemic challenges would undoubtedly make a fast learning, high caliber team member. They have my endorsement. So thanks for coming out virtually to get to know our students. Before we start, a quick but deeply felt thanks to my teaching assistants. Our TA team includes Jolene Lozano, who's president of the Boston College Computer Science Society, co-founder and president of MakeBC, the Boston College Engineering Club. She's been an intern at Sony, NBC, Google, and she's going to start as a project manager at Facebook this fall. Also, Jimmy McDermott, who's founder and CTO of the EdTech startup Transio. This is a thriving multi-employee firm that helps institutions prepare students with life readiness skills. And Jimmy is also a contributor to the open source Vapor Swift Server project. Chris Knapp, who's an incoming intern at PwC and has been vital helping out our students this semester. And the newest member of the team, the brilliant standout computer science student, Jennifer Joseph, who's going to be interning this summer at the flexible housing startup Landing. TA team, I am so grateful for the work that you've helped me with, as are the hundreds of students that you've helped over the years. Thank you. Also, the ever-brilliant Kayla Pelland can help connect you with Boston College STEM students, and Dean Amy Donegan can help connect you with our management undergrads as well. Now, if you don't know how to build apps and you're so inclined to learn, there are well over 100 self-paced learning videos that are online at this URL. Dive in. If you do learn, take a photo, tweet it out with our iOS Code Crush hashtag, and you might be selected for one of the cool My Mac Builds app stickers as part of our weekly giveaways. Talented students, we hope to see you at Boston College. Talent seeking employers, here is your pipeline. Now let's hear from the stars of the show, our student Swift developers. Giddy up! Hello, my name is Joseph Back, and I'm a current student in Carroll School of Management, class of 2023, studying business analytics and finance. Once we get in the app, here you um, see the sign in button. Then you'll be able to um, log in using your Gmail credentials. And here is um, the list. Once we go in one of the logs, there's the date, there's uh, the name of the workout, and there's like the summary, which is the actual log, and there's a, a timer. And you can save all this. And here's actually a feature. It's called What Should I Do? It, show, it uh, segues to a different uh, view controller. And here you can either um, shake or click on the Tell Me button. And it's, go it's going to go through um, a list of workouts you could be doing. And it would tell you, let's say you got cardio, you'll be able to uh, go on to this view controller which um, shows your current location. And here there's also a feature of editing. You could um, delete or move around the workout logs. I hope you guys liked it. And thank you so much for Prof G for teaching us um, these skills to build apps. Hi, so my name is Grace Carroll. I'm a current sophomore in CSOM studying information systems. 
So I built the Tony's Kitchen app, which will be used um, by a local food pantry that runs out of the St. Luke's Church in Montclair, New Jersey. Um, so Tony's Kitchen had asked me to build this app, which will help people to choose which kind of food that they would like to receive from the food pantry each week um, or each time they pick up. So I used Google to be able to sign in to keep track of the users and also to be able to set an administrator for the app um, so that the people behind the scenes at Tony's Kitchen can have control over loading in data and seeing who's using it um, while the users get to maintain their own privacy. So on the home screen, we'll have a menu loaded up each week um, so that people can view stuff about the menu. And each menu item also comes with a picture, a description, any allergy information, any ingredients, the quantity. Um, so it's a very, it's an interactive menu. And if you are ready to place an order, you can go to the view my orders tab where you can then view past orders. Um, you won't be able to change any of the information on the past orders tab, but you will be able to see all of the information that you put in. And then if you'd like to select new order, you can create a new order where you can then, uh, you know, create the order from scratch and put all the information and make your selections about which kinds of food you would like to receive for that week. And then once you press save, the document will be loaded into the cloud fire store and also updated in the table views. Um, so in the future, I would really like to be able to connect this app to something like a Google sheet or an Excel sheet, um, or any other kind of online database, uh, to be able to update it more automatically so that it doesn't have to be manual updates from the Tony's kitchen staff or from myself. Um, so I would love to be able to do that, um, and to be able to add in additional sign in methods such as phone number and email so that we can really capture the entire audience and not just those people that have Gmail accounts. Um, I'd like to thank Professor Gallagher and his TA team. This has been a really, really great semester in a really, really hard time. So thank you again, and I really enjoyed working with you all. Thanks. Hello, my name is Adam Del Castillo, and I'm a graduating senior studying computer science and marketing here at Boston College. The app I choose chose to make for this project is called Victory Points. Uh, over the course of quarantine, I've gotten super into board games, especially Settlers of Catan, so I thought it'd be fun to build something that would help me keep track of my stats in the game long term. Um, mine's a video because my M1 Mac has some issues with Firebase, but anyway, here's the starting screen. You um, log in with your Gmail, and then it pulls up a dashboard for you. This has the amount of games you've played, your win rate, your average score at the top, as well as a list of all your past games. It includes the title, when it happened, the scores, and your results. You can sort the results based off the date or by win or loss. The wins go on top, the losses go on the bottom. Uh, we're just going to take a look at one of the games here. You can see that um, it has the name of the game, everyone's victory points, and the names of the people who are in it. You can toggle the game as completed or not to edit the results. And yeah. Uh, you can also go ahead and make a new game by hitting the plus in the top corner where you enter in all the fields yourself and you enter the score as you go. You can also, um, as you can see here, you can log the different dice rolls that you're rolling. Um, I hope to, I didn't get it working uh, by the time I made the video, but I hope to implement the charts CocoaPod in which I will have a bar graph of all the rolls throughout the course of the game so you can see kind of how normal the distribution of all the rolls are and such, and I think that'd be a really nice feature to have. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the app, but if I were to continue developing the app, I'd definitely um, implement those charts, maybe add other statistics like how, how long your longest road is or how many nights you've used, and possibly even like what different resources you gain throughout the course of the game, but that's uh, a long ways down the road. Uh, thank you for seeing my app. 
Hi, my name is Emily Fabius, and I'm a senior computer science major. I built this app called Community Wallet that allows you to pay bills for people in your community. So you'll be at, you have a login view controller, and if you're a new user, you'll enter some create account info, which will take you to the main page. And if you already have an account, then it'll just log you straight into this main page that'll view all of the uh, posts already created and you can filter or you could click this add plus button to add a post if you need a bill to be paid where you'll enter this information about the bill. If you aren't adding a bill but you are on this main page and you want to pay a bill you can click on a cell and it'll also take you to a view controller that looks similar to this but you won't be able to adjust the information inside of the text views. Um, and then if you aren't the one who created the post, you'll have this little about your community member, which uh, saves, uh, keeps it anonymous. And then you can pay the amount and go straight to this confirm page so that you can confirm your payment and they'll say, tell you thank you for helping your community. And you can also, from this main page, click and view your account and see what bills you have posted and the amount in your wallet. Hello, welcome to my app. I have a book journal app for you today. You can sign in using Google. And what this lets you do is make your own book log on your app. You can go in, specify a rating, um, the status of it, update some comments. Um, and really enjoy all of your books that you might be keeping track of. You can, of course, add some. Um, you can search for them in any of these fields that I use the Google Books API to do. If I select one and I read it and I say, oh, this looks great, I can say use it. It'll auto-complete for me. Um, fill out some fields and really have a great time. Just save this. And there it is. Um, I also get recommendations through my app, um, and you can check out all of the cool recommendations that are dynamically generated based on the books in your current um, book log. Hello, everyone. My name is Robert Fleming. I'm a senior of the class of 20 and 21 here at Boston College, and the app that I'm designed to showcase today is WIA, or Where You At. I designed this app to help facilitate and recreate in-person connections that were forced online over the past year because of COVID. Now, initially, we just have a little screen here explaining explaining a little bit more about this app, but to start out, we just have a simple login button down here. I previously logged in to as avoid the Google sign-in sheet as well as the uh, allowing uh, location services just to save time. And as you see here, we have a search bar that can be used to find activities for you and your friends to do. Now, I currently, there are no other users uh, truly that use this site. So the only person's location services that I have access to are my own. So that is the blinking dot that you see here. And yes, there are still bugs to work out as I have been struggling to create a proper region for this map to fit in that's more comprehensible than just the United States. but. Moving on, uh, we have a friends list, and what it does is it searches the friends into three groups. A, those are the ones that are nearby, and this down the line will be set to a custom setting. It can be 5 miles, 25 miles, 50 miles, based on the user's choice. Then, we have outside of that time frame, as well as pending. And the pending people are the ones who have just been added. This is a very basic uh, screen of what it could look like, where so they have to input the, the friend that they're trying to make first name, last name, and email address, at which point the email will be sent to them, and their name will be listed here as a pending friend. Now, I didn't go through the, the light work to do this because every software or technology that I saw through my research required me to pay extra for that service. And in the terms of this project, I did feel as though it was warranted. Finally, moving on to just looking at uh, one of these connections with my friends, the little page that we see here is, it's a map view of where they are. As you can see, I have this Boolean term selected, so we are allowed to see each other's locations and get notified when they're close. And then the last thing here really 
is a little note section down here so we can keep track of maybe ideas that we had the last time we hung out that we would like to do this time. Let's say we decided that we really wanted to go to a bowling alley and if we were to write it down here, it'd be easier to remember it next time around. I plan on continuing to work in this app as next year I will be going to grad school for computer science and down the line, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to email me. My email's right here. Thanks. Bye. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Abrar Jalal. I go by AJ, so feel free to call me that. Um, I'm in MCAS. I am class of 2022. Um, currently I'm pursuing a computer science BS and a minor in math. Um, so this is Ding. Um, so basically the way it works, it, it's a platform that allows users to print, present all of their social media in one place. Uh, so our hope with this app was to help ease the way in which people connect. Um, and we actually reached out to one of our like target audiences is like orientation orientation sessions where um, students can more easily connect with uh, other students when they first meet. Uh, some of the techniques that we used in this that I used in this app were the table view, custom table view cells, the model view controller software, um, design pattern rather, uh, a messaging feature, and Google Cloud, Firebase, and Firestore. Uh, and then we can go ahead and get a little demo in. So right now I am logging into my account with my email. So here we have our, my profile. Um, and as you can see, you can add different fields. So right now I have my phone number and text message and I'm adding in my Instagram handle. handle. And these are all customizable, so you can add different fields. And essentially, they're hyperlinks that lead to the actual, <coughs> your actual, for example, here, my Instagram. And I will show you right now. See, it just pulls over. And now if we go over to the search bar, we can see that you can have a bunch of uh, other students, and you can search through it. Here I'm searching for someone, one of my friend, friends, Gabe. He, so I actually already have him as a friend. Um, and then you can message them directly. So I s send them a text message. And you can view those messages in the messages tab on the right side. And it'll appear. And you can also start conversations. So now I'm trying, I am starting a conversation with Maddie. Um, and as you can see, it's the same process as before where you can message them. And yeah, that's about it. That's the working model. Hey, I'm Jay. I'm almost a sophomore, but that's enough about me. Actually, there is one more thing. So during my limited time here at Boston College, I've discovered that near the end of the semester, my dining plan is completely drained, so I can't eat. In fact, I haven't eaten anything for the past two weeks. The app I built and have here today is called Swipe For Me. It allows users like you and me to avoid nutritional deficiency. It lets you offer and request most swipes. It's currently very minimalistic. It's a great euphemism for lacking features, but I promise it really is very straightforward and easy to use. So let's get right into it. I'm first gonna sign in with my personal non-BC email address. And, huh, looks awfully empty. So let's try and fix that by creating a post. All these fields need to be filled in, except the additional comments, which is optional. Um, but here we go. Huh, it's a safe fail because you are not logged in with a Boston College email address. <laughs> so it turns out that there was a point to me signing in with a personal email address earlier, and it's the demonstrative feature I've included where only those signed in with a Boston College email address can interact with the data, can save data, can see existing or updated data. So we can sign out and log in with my BC email address to prove that. There we go. All this data is already here. It turns out it always was here. Uh, we can interact with it. I promise these ugly boxes are only visible to you, the creator. Uh, I made all these posts. Uh, if you're looking at someone else's post or someone else is looking at your post, um, they don't see these boxes. And I wish I could show you that in real time, but I made all these posts myself. And so what I do have is a screenshot. So this is what it would look like. So you can even delete a post. And we can use these segmented controls to see who's on upper, 
just to use lower and even Newton. Maybe forget about Newton. Uh, but that's about it for now. Uh, I promised you it was really simple. There's a lot more features I am looking into. Uh, transferring funds, maybe Boston College or GetMobile has some sort of API I can use to track balances in real time. Uh, trade system of some sort to equate dining bucks with real money through Venmo, PayPal, or card or something like that. A counter system to show how many successful transactions have occurred using dual authentication, kind of like how Uber Eats does. Uh, the possibilities are endless. But I also do kind of want to maintain this simplicity. But I'm out of time. Thank you all for watching. I hope to get swipe from me out on the App Store as soon as possible. I hope someone downloads it, and I hope it really helps some people out. Anyways, stay safe, and have the best day ever. Hi everyone, my name is Louise. I am a sophomore at Boston College studying finance and entrepreneurship. Today I'll show you guys my app called Eagle Buddies. Um, I have no prior uh, programming experience, so this is all very new to me. Um, this app basically helps you connect with other BC friend groups on campus. I thought it would be a good idea since, you know, with COVID it's been really hard to meet people and maybe creating a profile for your friend group instead of just yourself would be a little less intimidating. So first I'm going to sign in with my uh, Gmail. And once I do that, you can see that I already um, pre-uploaded four different friend groups like this. And if you look at the bottom, you can sort by seniority. So maybe if you're a senior and you want to see all the senior friend groups first, um, and then if you're a freshman, you want to see all the freshman friend groups first. So I'll just click on one to give you an example. The one called the Wizarding Trio, you can see, you know, Harry, Ron, and Hermione. You can upload a photo of you guys from the photo library. Um, I already uploaded one. And you can also, you know, share your name, your graduation year, the members, um, a little description about yourself. And then you can also comment. You can already see I already added four comments, but I'll go, hey guys. And let's grab lunch. You seem cool. And I'll say, yes, I want to connect. And then you can, you know, share your social media. Um, to maybe, you know, follow each other on Instagram or, you know, add each other on Snapchat, which I thought would be cool. And then you can see my, my comment down here. So yeah, that's my app. Hi, my name is Kristen. I'm currently a sophomore in CSOM, and the app for my final project is called Drip. Drip is an app that lets you plan your outfits around the weather and chat with others about the weather and the nice outdoors. So first in Drip, it uses Google authentication just to see which users are using it. And it helps you sign in. And upon signing in, you have access to your location. And if you allow it, it will bring you to the weather precisely for your location. I'm on campus and currently it's 16 degrees Celsius and as well as an outfit for the day. So today it's warmer, wear a sweater and leggings, and it's also cloudy, so there's clouds emojis. On the community tab, there is comments by anyone, and if you click on them, it will show them in bigger detail, as well as the account that posted them and the date. And if we want to add a comment, you can add one here and you can save it. So today I'll say 16 degrees, and I'll say, lovely weather and once I press save it will show up right at the bottom and there's my new comment as well as my account that I posted it from. Back over on the weather tab it automatically updates every time and if you don't want to be at your current location you can also use Google Places to search up this place so I can search up my home in Whistler and it will pop up and the weather is much colder there. So a sweater and boots are recommended. In future iterations, I would like to add maybe more pictures as well as a little bit more live updating between accounts, um, as well as maybe a predictive element on which outfits to wear as not everyone wears the same things. Um, I would like to say thank you to the TAs and Professor Gallagher for a great year. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Henry. Um, 
made this app called Pokemaker, and the idea behind this app is you're able to sort of make your own Pokemon, and there's a lot of common applications to this. I mean, if you're making up like a task list, like a custom task list, or anything that needs to fill out a form, I think this would be useful. So right now I'm running it on the original app, and I, I'm doing a recording. I'm not able to do the simulator because of some issues I'm having with some of the um, Firestone stuff on my uh, ARM Mac. But right now I incorporated so far a login system with Google. And you can see we're able to still see the uh, old Pokemon list that we did in class. But so right now I'm adding a custom picture to this new Pokemon I'm making. I'm just gonna add a picture of my dog, for example, and then um, give it a name, Doggo. Um, give it like two types. Um, I can just sort of speed things up a little bit here. Um, able to give it like two types um, and then come up with some abilities. Uh, so like move one, move two, move three, move four, uh, which is common in, in Pokemon. So roll over, bark, um, coming up with a few more, uh, sorry, run and uh, nap. I just wanted to speed it up a little bit so as to not go over the time limit, but um, here we get a keypad where we're able to sort of get the attack, get the defense, get the health and speed values. And um, I kind of wanted to add a map kit um, later on um, so I'm able to put the location of the Pokemon as well. Um, so that's something I'm going to work on before uh, the deadline on Monday, as well as uh, some sounds that, that, that we'll be able to play. And you can see here I'm able to edit it, and I have some form validation, so if I don't enter a name, it's, it's not going to let me save onto Firebase. And so I'm um, going to change it to Caddo here, and, uh, and as you can see it saves and you're able to retrieve it. Hi everyone, my name is Zach. I'm a current senior at Boston College and the app I made is called Ready Recipe. The main premise of the app is to create a place where users can sign in and view recipes that other users have posted as well as save their favorite recipes and create a weekly planner for themselves. So to use the app, you need to sign in to your Google accounts. And once you have signed in, it will take you to the initial view controller where you can click on recipes that other people have loaded. So here there's just a table view and you can sort alphabetically. If you want to add a new recipe, you can add a photo, the ingredients, and the instructions. And then if you want to save a recipe, you can go to your saved list and view all the recipes that you have saved. And when you want to create your calendar, you can click on the calendar button and it will take you here where we have the day of the week, the name of a recipe, as well as the image that was uploaded for that recipe. And when you click on one of these cells, it will either take you to a blank page where you can add a recipe. And this takes you again to uh, that saved list that you have where you can add one of these recipes or it will already be populated if you've added it. So that's my app. Thank you so much for listening. Hi, I'm Will Redman. I'm a junior in CSUM and I'm concentrating in accounting, but I have a computer science minor. So this is not my first coding class, but it's my first time working with Swift. So it was really interesting to see, you know, the behind the scenes. Um, the app I have today is an idea that me and my friend had on one of our podcasts. Um, and it's basically so dog rescue and adoption centers can get more exposure by posting all the dogs that they have on this app and then people who are potentially looking for dogs can go on the app and either like or dislike the dogs and if they like it um, they can get in contact with the with the centers maybe adopt or rescue so let's give it a run so the main screen here is uh, where you see the dogs and their stats and you can either like or dislike so I'll like I dislike these are all my dogs um, and then if you do like, it goes to your like page and you can click on who posted it and get their email there. And the other two features are an add dog feature. If you want to post your own dog, you can get all this. And then also your profile, you can set preferences on the size, the if it's hypoallergenic or max distance of the dogs you want to see on the app. And you can select if you want to post dogs or not. Um, so that's it. Uh, if I had anything else, I would maybe find a way to add animals other than dogs. That would be cool. Um, but other than that, you know, uh, I'm new to this, so maybe a mentor too. 
So thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Brishti Saha, and I'm a senior here at Boston College studying computer science and economics. And today I made this app called Expense Tracker. And when you open the app, it makes a little ka-ching sound and then you um, leads to the main part of the app where it has a list of different um, expenses. And you can see at the top, it's um, the balance you have. So um, you can see that some of these are positive amounts and some of these are negative amounts. And then under each of them, you can see that I spent 575 on Thursday on food and it's um, I put a little note. And then you can also add a new um, new one. And you can, for amount, you can see that the keypad is limited to the decimal keypad. And let's say I spent $55 on groceries today. Um, and then you can put it under groceries and then you can put a little note. And then for my note, I'm just gonna put star market and then I'm gonna put save. And then you can see by date, um, it's gonna be at the most recent, so groceries $55. And then by amount, you can also see it's down here, groceries. And then you can also see that the balance has updated um, to the corresponding amount um, based on what you just put in. And then if I were to continue to develop this app, I would um, put a section header for the different dates. So then you can see that um, based on either the month or the each day, um, how, how many purchases you've, you've made and which purchases they are. And um, I actually attempted to do that, but it only worked with the ready save data and not with, uh, it could, wouldn't work with um, adding new data. So this is kind of how it looked like um, where you see you have a section header for the month of May and these are expenses I had listed and then for April. And yeah, that's it, that's my app, thank you. Hi, my name is Annabelle Schultz and I'm a junior in MCAS. I created an app called Eagle Eval because I saw a need on BC campus for an app that would allow students to rate, rank, and review courses and professors. I use a lot of the techniques that we've learned this semester, such as table views, working with custom classes and table view cells, um, working with Cloud Firestore. I also taught myself a couple new techniques, such as using um, Apple's Picker View, um, using some Objective C functions, and creating a search bar that worked with Firebase Search. So once I launch the app, you'll be able to see that upon launch, it plays a small little popping sound. There it is, hopefully you can hear that. And the app immediately populates with some course reviews that I've already written. If I want to add a new course, I can click the plus button up here and I will call my course, um, how about Swift 1000 section one. Um, just swift and I will teach this course Maybe I've got to save it before I can review it, but I do have a Sort functionality. So because my name starts with an a it'll come up pretty quickly I added a featured keyword section to my app because I wanted students opening a course to be able to see um, How the students who have already reviewed it have described it So once I add the first reading that'll show up and I can either let me show you I can either just rate or add a star rating and then rate it. So I'll do that here. I'll call it a fantastic course. Keyword for other students will be that this was a fun course. Here is my picker view. I wanted to have a selection between just um, fall, spring, and summer semesters and then just a few predetermined years. So we'll say spring 2014 and that I love this course. That's my review. And I will save that and it will show right up in the course page for Swift. And if I wanted to update it, I can click on that very easily, change the star rating or something, um, fantastic times, and update it. Now, if I also if I wanted, I can add this course to a list of saved courses. And it will show up right there. And that way I can access that very easily when it comes to course registration. Now let's head into rankings for another course, which I actually didn't make. I technically made it with my other email. 
when I access a review made by another user, the interface looks a bit different because I wouldn't want people to be able to edit that if they didn't create the review. But I can still add the course to my saved courses and save that quickly. Another thing I can do is delete courses from saved courses pretty, pretty easily by clicking on a star, confirming that I want to remove it, and then clicking either save or back will work. And one more exciting functionality I added was the ability to search courses. So just by typing in, I can check that out pretty quickly. And I can also access my save from here or the list of users of the app um, from the home screen. So that is it from me, and I hope you enjoyed my app. Hello, my name is Chelsea Schwartz, and I have created the app Anaphylaxis Aid. Um, and the primary goal is to help individuals who are having an allergic reaction and to prevent the possibility that their epinephrine auto injector would be expired. So to keep track of the expired auto injectors, you open the app and click either this image or the words, and it shows you a table view of all the auto injectors that you've entered. You can delete them and move them around. So let's say we're re replacing this one. So you press the plus to add a new one. Let's say we have an EpiPen and there's four of them with the same expiration date. You turn it on, let's say they're expiring today, so I can show you the notification. It pops up there, it saves, um, so it keeps track of that, and it'll give you a notification when that expires, so you know immediately um, and can fix that, so you never have an expired auto-injector. If you're having an allergic reaction, you can press down here, and you'll get directions on what to do with your auto-injector. That's the notification that pops up when you have something that expires. Um, and so this, this is the directions, call 911. You can also press down here and it pops up with this automatic message that you can text to a loved one. And on a real phone, you just, it pops up with the messages in the bubble and all you have to do is type in a contact name. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jesse Tuglu and I'll be presenting the BitWallet app, which is a live cryptocurrency portfolio tracker. Um, so basically the point of this app is for people who you know have busy days they're not in front of a computer that often and they need quick reliable access to real-time data regarding their portfolio holdings um, so over here is an empty portfolio we can add a new uh, holding let's say we add doge um, let's buy like 12 and a, uh, 13 and a half shares of doge um, we can change the date but i won't in this case um, and you can see our portfolio automatically updates um, and this will update roughly every 20 seconds served from a custom built um, Golan backend, uh, which is um, so entire full stack is developed solely by myself, custom built for efficiency. Um, so then we, when we click on Doge here, we can see that the current price is roughly 52 cents. We have hourly, uh, weekly and yearly percentage data and also um, more granular position details like position size, number of shares and date purchased. Um, we can go back and add more things. So let's say we wanted to add um, Ethereum Classic. We could add um, uh, one share of uh, Binance Coin. Um, we can sort by uh, price as well as amount. And uh, you can also remove things from your portfolio. And uh, this app also uses local storage, so your data will persist when you close the app and reload it. Um, it will remain up to date so you can keep track of your holdings and uh, perform better. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jake Wang and my app is called The Decider. Um, I made this app because oftentimes when I'm with my friends and we want to get food, none of us know exactly what we really want. It's always what you want. Um, doesn't really matter to me. It's up to you, back and forth. Um, and so I made this app to provide like an interactive way to make the final decision for you and so in this first round you kind of generally just choose what you're in the mood for what you um what you're feeling so um for example purposes i'll just choose every option and so once i click on something the ready button appears which takes us to the second round which is um like tinder where you can swipe right for yes and swipe left for no and the, th the catch is that it's time restrictive so um, I'll show you 
uh, what that means. So for some reason, if you can't make a decision fast enough, it shoots you back to the home page. And so that's why you have to really make sure you want something or if you just want to toss that uh, decision aside. And so I'm going to just make some random swipes to get to the final page. And so the final page is just a spinner, which is comprised of all the foods that you swiped yes on. And so now I'll spin this. And we'll get sushi. So um, we can either log this or go back to the home page. I'll log it. As you can see, there's already logs that I've done before. And so we'll just say sushi. Um, I won't put in your restaurants or menu or items for now, you can save this and it'll appear in the table view. Um, and then you can also return back to home, check your logs again if you want. And also there's another button that just displays the rules. And yeah, if I wanted to keep working on this app, I think I would maybe um, add Firebase to this and add a, like a little suggestions tab where people that can log in can either post or view other suggestions. And yeah, that's my app. Thank you so much for watching. Hi everyone, my name is Quinn Wilson. I'm a sophomore in the Carroll School of Management at Boston College. I'm studying finance and information systems with a minor in computer science. And the app that I built for my final project is called Bouncer. Bouncer is an app that aims to connect BC students with popular restaurants and events in their area. As COVID restrictions get looser, more and more people want to go out with their friends to different restaurants and bars and parties and so on. And so Bouncer is an app that hopes to connect people with these events. So to demonstrate the app, I'm going to sign in with Google to start. Uh, once this loads, it'll show my two Google accounts. I'm going to choose my BC email to sign in. And after clicking this, it should segue into the first view, which um, is just going to show a very long list of a bunch of different restaurants and places you can go in Boston to get food or drinks or whatever you want to do on any given night. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to try to find some place that I know BC kids like to go. Um, looks like citrus and salt could be a good place. So I'm going to click on this. Uh, it's going to bring me to this view where I get a picture, a little description of the price. Um, then there's a BC attendees count and also shows it on a map. So if I'm going, I'm going to click on this switch and it's going to automatically update right here. Uh, unfortunately, right before recording this video, the, sh the search bar stopped working, so I'm going to have to fix that soon. Um, but for the rest of the app, I'm going to have another table view right here where people can host different events or parties or gatherings or so on. And then I also have your own personal profile right here. So this is me, my email, and when I became a user. So yeah, this is the app that I'm building. It's something I'm hoping to continue working on in the future and refining because it is something I would like to release someday. Um, still have a lot of work to do, but uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Hey guys, my name is Jack Winslow. I'm a freshman in MCAS, and the name of my app is Community Uni. And so this was an idea that a friend and I had in our high school entrepreneurship class. And so the goal is to connect high schoolers who are looking to go to various colleges and connect them with college students to converse about student life and other uh, parts of the college experience you wouldn't necessarily get off of student forums and things like that. Um, so as you can see here, there's two apps actually. The one on the right is for the high schooler and the one on the left is for the college student who would be messaging. Uh, it's kind of like if you've ever used DoorDash or Dasher, it's similar to that. There's two separate apps uh, connected to the same database. Uh, for the high schooler app, it's, there's a home, discover, messages, and profile tab. Uh, so on home here, you can see there's recently added schools, Boston College and University of Pittsburgh, just two examples. Um, same on the Discover tab, and there's nothing in Messages except for one message with some college student named Jack who goes to Boston College. Um, so as you can see here, we'll go back, cl click on Boston College. Uh, you'll see there's one student available to communicate and message on here. So we'll just go in. I'll show you the real-time updates. Uh, if I sign up here on the left in the College app, uh, we'll use the name Tom Brady. Goes to Boston College. and just a generic password. Sign up, and right on the right here, it updates immediately. Two students ready to communicate, and you know a new person that I can connect with named Tom. So 
right here. This is where if Tom were to have set interests yet, uh, they'd end up right here in this text view. But we want to communicate with Tom. Open up a messages uh, view controller. And as you can see, the messages are also showing up now uh, under the high schooler's name Bobby uh, for the college students messages. And now we can just text and it's a real time update. So they'll show up on both sides here. So if the college student wants to text first. He can send a message. It shows up over here. And, you know, go back and forth. So as you can see, also, this will show up in the high schoolers messages tab because uh, there's a new message here and go in and out whenever you'd like. And so some of the techniques that you, uh, you probably saw that I use, table view, connect collection view, uh, custom cells for both of them, animations and UI effects like uh, rounded corners and custom buttons and text fields, uh, real-time UI updates based on Firebase, Firebase access uh, from two apps, and the use of CocoaPods, uh, message kit, which I use to create the messages here, and custom Firebase authentication with a custom login and sign up screen. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for a great year. Professor Gallagher, and uh, I look forward to more Swift coding. Hello, my name is Amy. I'm a junior at MCAS. Um, my app name is Field. It's a social media platform for artists. Um, I made this app because I really like drawing. I think it will be fun to make a platform which allows me to post my drawings. And here is the home page. And you can see the user generated content. You can scroll down for more contents. Sometimes it takes a while to load. And let's click on one post to see details. And we can either like a post or add a comment. And all the comments are shown in a table view. It's added. And let me show you how to add a picture. And let's check whether it's posted. Here it is. It still take a while to load the image. And here it is. Also there's the delete button. And let me show you how to add a post when it's only in text. And let's type something random. And post it. It's shown there. And we press the delete button and deleted it. And there's another function of this app which is to allow every user to have a um, profile page. And it only contains the posts posted by that specific user, which is really nice. And let's scroll down to check. Yeah, it's from the same user. Also, you can edit your profile page, including your name, profile picture, and an introduction. And let's edit its name for this time. Let's save it and go back. You can see its, it's name is changed. And let's go back to the home page. Here's another function of this app. It's called the inspiration page. So it returns a random object from the Mads Museum. I got from their API. And every time you click the button, it gets you a different image. I think it's a good, really interesting function and a good source of inspiration. 
Uh, let's go back and get another image. Here it is. So this is all I have for this app. As for further improvements, I want to add more user interaction features. And thanks for watching. Uh, for this final project, I decided to create an app, which I've named Workout App. And what it does is basically it grabs data from an API and parses that data into different um, structs, which are tagged with codable so that they're, so the JSON can be decoded and encoded. Um, and these AP, we grab the information from the API and we store it in a results array, which is then later used to be displayed on the workout list view controller, which is a view controller that lists all the workouts in alphabetical order. And then there's also the detail view controller, which when you click on a cell on the table view, it shows you a different, it shows you a detail view controller, which lists, which um, tells you what the title of that workout is, the categories, and the muscles that you uh, used for that workout, uh, the equipment's necessary, and the description of that um, workout. So for now, I, th this is what the main storyboard looks like. It uses a navigation controller to segue between um, table view and detail view controllers. Um, so a user would tap on a cell here and it would show the um, various information about that workout in this view controller. So I'll just demo it here. I'll play it for now and see if this works. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So it does take some time for the app to load. And this might have something to do with the um, internet speed or the the speed it take the amount of time it takes to parse to kind of take the data and parse it. Uh, this is a page to view uh, a page JSON. So if I can show yeah here, um, this is the the JSON um, uh, the the yeah the JSON, and it's a page JSON. So there's a next. A field here which when you click on it it shows you the next page and the next page and so on so by continuously using the next field URL we create we keep um, pulling JSON data from this API and parsing it into our, in our app um, so this is what happens uh, and when you click on one for example tricep dips It'll say what category it's in, what muscles it exercises, and it looks like equipments aren't needed for tricep dips here. And then this just says, um, this kind of just describes how you do the workout. Um, let's see another one. Another uh, classic is sit ups. Abs is the category, and the actual muscle name is rectus abdominis. And this is, oh, and it's scrollable here in case the description goes on for a long time, or in case the description is really long. <clears throat> so yeah, that is the app that I have so far. Um, some improvements that could be made on this app, definitely, is that there could be more personalization on this app. Um, for example, there could be like a, a tab a kind of tab controller here which wasn't taught in this course but if I have more time I can look into tab controllers on my own um, this the left side could be for example could be um, uh, all the workouts and then the right side could be the uh, called it uh, could be a more personalized um, part of this app called my workouts and for every when we click on for example this uh, Roman chair workout, there could be like a plus button in this corner to say add to my personalized workouts. And then you could have like a view of your personalized workout um, regimen. And then maybe you could also put in, or I could also put in like sets and rep numbers, um, different 
kinds of workouts for different days, etc. And I think the number one thing that I could try to do is pull up pictures or images for these different workouts. Um, unfortunately, the, the API that I've received, I'm not sure how, for example, um, here in the muscles array, there is a there's an object, and within that object there's a there's something called image URA, URL main, and this is what I get, and I'm not sure how to display SVG images on the um, app, and also not sure how to access this. This looks like a partial URL, and um, yeah, but. Another improvement is I could also put in some images for this app. Um, yeah. So this is the uh, so far what the workout app, so far the workout app um, for my project. Hi, I am Jinjo from MCAS. I am a class of 2021. This is the first time I use Swift to code. Um, my app is used for collecting news for users. You can see the table view contains um, the news title, author, and also the source of the news. And uh, I also plan to help authors add, add their own news in the future. You can see the also the news image here and also the news content. Um, and uh, I will implement the segmented control based on the alphabetic order of the title and also um, the published date of the um, news. You can see when I log in, I use the sounds and animations uh, and uh, I also collect the information from the news org API. After that, I pass through the JSON with Swift JSON. And uh, I also use the uh, Google login in addition to the Firebase database. Um, I will add the news information into the database in the future. I will not show the a login process here. Um, that's basically what my app does. Thank you. Hi, my name is Terry, and I'm currently a freshman studying finance and information systems. My app is called Planable. It's an app that helps Boston College to host and organize events at one place. Students can log into the app using their university credentials and explore recent events, but over, create their to-do list on the app to remind them for the events they have registered. Students can also find information of all clubs and organizations that are approved by Boston College. The reason I created this app is partially inspired by my boyfriend, since he mentioned that it's relatively hard to keep up with hundreds of email every semester. Making an app having all information condensed can certainly make so many positive changes. For instance, it will definitely improve students' university experience by providing a more convenient platform for accessing information of events and organizations. And let's move forward to the app. Um, as I mentioned above, we can use our university credential to log into the app. And here I already have my tapped in, so we just click that. All right, the first page we have here is the community's event update page. University authorities and organization pre presidents are able to post on this page about their recent events or update on um, previous events. Next, we'll have the page where uh, students, can, students can create their event to-do list. You can either add events by clicking the plus sign on the top right, or you can click into old events um, to see more details that you've recorded. For instance, we have alumni job shadow here, and it's on um, May 21st, 2021, and is at 9 a.m. in the morning. Moving forward, we'll have this page of all the organizations that is approved by Boston College recorded with their information. So it'll be easier for either freshmen or older students um, to look into clubs for, info for more information. It'll just be way more easier um, than doing research on the official website. 
moving forward to the simple profile page, uh, we'll have a picture if you have a profile picture for your university credential Gmail account, and which I don't, I, which I don't really have one, so it's blank right here, and it will record my name and my university uh, Gmail as well. And if you want to log out of the app, just simply click the question mark on the top right and click sign out and you're sign out. Um, lastly, I am planning to um, continue to work on my app and making it more accessible where not only Boston College can employ this app. Hopefully one day the app can be used by different universities. It will be a relatively difficult process for me to continue to work on this since this is my first time coding such a complex language. I've only had experience of using JavaScript for high school AP computer science class. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for the help and encouragement from Professor Gallagher and my TA Jolene. And that's all I have for today. Thank you so much. So that's a wrap on the app showcase. The students worked so hard this semester from going first from Hello World to building a full scale app just at the end of a couple of weeks. So it was really challenging, but a big round of applause to everyone tuned in on the live stream for all of those students. We're really, really proud of what you guys have been able to do. And also a big thank you to Professor Gallagher, as always. It's crazy because Jimmy and I have been TAs for so long. Jimmy has been a TA for three and a half years and I've been a TA for just a bit under um, three years. So it's been really crazy to see how fast time has went away and we're really going to miss you. You've been such a great mentor to us throughout the years and we are go we really appreciate to have had you along our college journey. So thank you again. And finally, for everyone who's tuned in on the live stream, do not forget to vote for your favorite app in the link in the description below in the Google form. We'll be giving out prizes in various categories um, to some of the students. And so one of those categories is audience choice. So don't forget to vote. Thank you so much again for tuning into the live stream and we hope to see you next semester. Thanks so much.